Interior designers' revenue is based completely off of design fees, right? Wrong. In today's video, I will be sharing the multiple ways how interior design companies make the necessary revenue to then pay out their employees, make sure that the business costs are covered, and of course, create the profit that they need to actually be a successful interior design company. Hello, welcome back or welcome to Space for Edit. My name is Cynthia and on this channel we talk about all the things that they don't teach you in design school but you need to know in the real world. So I have worked in the commercial interior design industry for about eight years now and I've learned a few ways how different interior design companies make their money and you might think it's all quite black and white but actually it is not and especially with the rise of the digital and the online platforms now there's a lot more that interior designers can do. Before we start the video I do have to clear something out. Most of these extra income streams will require a bigger team and when I talk about the designer I often think the design company. You will understand why as we go through the video but just to clear it out it's easier for me to say the designer than design studio or interior design company. Get what I mean? Okay let's dive in. The first one is the obvious one which is design fees. I have made quite a few videos now on this topic so make sure you check out the links below to the rest of those videos if you haven't seen them yet. Basically this covers all of the design work that the designer will be doing. So this could be brief taking, visiting sites, doing concept design, doing drawings, doing visuals, creating video walkthroughs, doing detailed design. So everything that actually requires physical or mental designing that is usually included in design fees and is one of the sort of main income streams for interior design studios. The next revenue new stream for interior design studios could be project management. Now some designers will include this fee within the design fee, so what we just talked about. It really depends how the client has approached the designer. Other designers will be hired only just for project management, so that will be a separate fee. And then there's also cases where design companies include their project management fees within like the total budget proposal. And this will be either like a separate line for project management or or this could also be kind of covered and include it into the margins of the whole project. This really depends on the design company and how they prefer to work and how they work with their clients. Sometimes clients just need the designs and they have their own leads for project managers. But if the client wants to kind of just go to one person or go to this one studio and make sure that they do everything and they don't have to kind of like outsource anymore and stress anymore, then interior designers can do project management as well. Whilst we are talking about contractors and suppliers, it is worth mentioning the next possible income stream, which is commissions. So this is almost like a bit of a you scratch mine, I'll scratch your back kind of situation. I will tell you from my own experience, it is hard to kind of survive, especially in the beginning stages, it is hard to survive completely on your own. And I would say that no interior design company or studio really is on their own. So for example, let's say a contractor that I would love to work with as an interior design studio goes out and does their job and someone asks them for an interior designer, do you know one? And then they go, okay, yes, I know Cynthia, she's doing great work in interior design, I can make you a contact. So if this project goes live, it is if it's a successful lead, then I would include a percentage of whatever the commission is that we've agreed in my design fees and then later on pass it back on to the contractor so everyone's happy there's new project and i might even work with the actual contractor and give him the job if i can obviously this can happen with furniture suppliers and anyone else that's kind of like in the ecosystem of interior design next i wanted to talk about trade discounts this seems to be like a bigger topic in the US and in the residential field, but it's still a possible income revenue stream uh, anywhere in the world if you are an interior design company. So it's definitely worth mentioning. Trade discount is basically what it says on the tin. It is the price that only interior designers can access if they are working with a certain furniture supplier, certain lighting supplier, any FFNE supplier, there is a specific price that only the trade 
can access. So if your client was to go to the showroom, to the supplier straight away, they will not be able to have this discount. So you can see how this could easily be turned into profit for the interior design company. Clients don't always know that there is a discount that the interior designer is getting, but at the same time, some designers like to kind of give away their discount to the potential client, thinking that maybe that will entice the client to use them instead of someone else, like a competitor. So that's really up to the designer. There's no rules on whether you should be giving away your discounts. So it's really up to the interior designer to kind of think about it. Do I want to make extra money or do I want to maybe win this job and give the discount away to the client? This kind of revenue stream actually works really well in the luxury and high-end design because as you can imagine, the trade discount will be a lot larger. So the money that the interior designer can take away is a lot more and those clients are not really interested into getting discounts most of the times. If they are high-end luxury clients, they have the funds that they have the budget and they are not really interested in getting any money back. So all of that can go to the designer. If you're interested more about this topic like trade discounts and how to manage the clients and kind of ins and outs on what to do with that, then make sure you let me know in the comments below and I can make another video about hey it. guys, we are halfway through the video and I'm assuming that if you are still here, then you are enjoying the video. So I would like to ask you to give a little support to the girl over here and either like the video leave a comment below or subscribe to the channel if this is something that you would like to see more of. It really takes just seconds for you but it makes a massive and I mean it a massive difference to my journey as a digital content creator. So thank you and let's crack on with the video. So quite similar to trade discounts is project margins. Concept is the same but the execution is a little different. Let me explain. So margins come into play when a designer creates creates the total budget for the project. So this includes everything from FFE to labor to outsourcing professionals, anything that will require this project from being concept and being on the drawing board to become a reality. So all the services and all the elements that are needed, that's in the project budget. A designer can put a margin on top of each of those items. So whether it's a service, whether it's outsourced professional, or whether it's a piece of furniture. So for example, a designer could put maybe a 20 to 25% extra margin on top of some decorative elements like little bric-a-brac items versus maybe only putting a 3% extra margin on something that they've outsourced, a structural engineer, and even between different furniture pieces, if they are sourced from different furniture companies, you can put a different type of margin on top. And this percentage is usually impacted by the discount that the designer gets i'm getting very i feel like i need i need some graphics around me so that discount the margin on the furniture pieces will depend on the trade discount that comes from the supplier to the designer so you can see how all of these extra monies are starting to dripping into the interior designer's pocket. And in my opinion, only my opinion, I think the best way to go about this is to be quite open with your client that you will be adding extra margin on top of the total budget. Just to kind of avoid the awkwardness later down the line in case the client starts to kind of cherry pick your prices from the budget and says, well, why is this costing this much when I checked it was that price? So you don't have to break down your margins. You don't have to like tell them, okay, this is how much I'm making. You just have to be honest that there is a margin on this project that will help me with running my business and covering the costs. It's as simple as that. When we talk about project margins, it is essential to understand that design fees only can't cover running an interior design business. And this is when we are talking about a team of, I don't know, three to five to 10 to 20, to even more interior designers and other professionals really that form interior design companies. On design fees alone, nothing would happen. If you are a solo designer, yes, design fees can absolutely cover 
your time and your effort but if you want to make some extra money which you should as a business owner then you have really have to think about these margins okay less of the kind of technical stuff let's get into something a bit more fun the next possible revenue stream I wanted to touch on is product lines so these are any type of physical product that the designer can develop it could be anything from essential oils candles to even furniture lines rug collections or wallpaper collections some might say that this is actually like a separate business to like the main interior design business which I definitely agree with it really depends on the scale of this you as a designer as a design house could be just acting as a collaborator as a creative input and you are putting your name on let's say a certain collection of cushions or like soft furnishings for homes so you will put your name on it and you will get some sort of a commission either for all the purchases or like a fixed fee or anything along the lines or you could actually be getting all in 100% and creating this product from scratch on your own so outsourcing all of the team all of the people everything that you need to make this happen so you can see that this really depends on how really deep you want to go into it but there's definitely money to be made and I think a lot more design companies will start to explore this option in the future whereas at the moment you can only see like the big names or the big brands kind of creating their own collections next income stream that kind of goes hand in hand with the one prior this one is paid collaborations so we all know that there's paid collaborations left right center happening on social media now currently mostly these collaborations happen with like digital creators fashion bloggers lifestyle bloggers and that kind of crowd but slowly the interior design community industry is kind of catching up with that and I'm very very excited about it because why not why not explore this possible revenue stream when it's right there if you think about it the stuff that we use on day to day from software to technology to any kind of product even like the suppliers that we use just anything that surrounds us that we use in order to do our job we could promote that we could collaborate with those brands and get some revenue from it now obviously what it takes is an online community not everyone has the time the resource or the actual willingness to put the effort into and make this a real thing i understand it's a lot and definitely needs an extra team extra hands on deck but if you are serious about it why not i think it's very exciting and for me personally as a digital content creator and a designer, I can just see so much potential in there. And since we're on the topic of online, online communities, I thought it would be nice to wrap the video up with the last income stream that interior designers can have, an online business model. Now there's quite a few things that actually kind of slot into this. I just wanted to kind of put it out as one main point. Now again, to make this successful and make this revenue stream actually work the while you need an online community you need someone who's already following you who loves your work who supports you and just kind of wants more wants to go that extra mile with you as an interior design company so as the digital era is kind of like growing expansionally we are getting more and more comfortable with living a life online especially after the pandemic and a lot of businesses that were kind of the brick and mortar went out of business because they didn't have an online platform now i'm not saying that that's going to happen to interior designers but there's definitely a piece of the bigger pie that we can get from that so when i say an online business model this could be anything from paid subscriptions and memberships to a youtube channel to a podcast an ebook or a digital course like for example i have a visualizing course that is an extra stream of income for me that is not my main focus but every now and then I get a piece of that pie of online education. So the opportunities, and that is the key word here, opportunities are out there for us. It's just how willing are we to adapt ourselves, our teams, the way we design, the way we operate in this industry and really go after that opportunity. If this has created a little bit of a spark in you, but you are not really sure where to start with online and 
content creation, creating community online as an interior designer, then my Instagram account, designers to creators might be of use to you. On that account, I talk about all the sort of tips and tricks and on how to create that online community and create content online and start to kind of grow the brand awareness in a way that content creators do. I'll leave the link to that account in below or check me out on Instagram, designers to creators if you want to learn more. So tell me, which one of these income streams are you already generating as an interior designer and which ones would you like to explore more? Do you feel like maybe creating a new product or collaborating with a brand could create some extra revenue streams or maybe creating a YouTube account and showing your day-to-day -day business would bring some extra revenue to maybe take out your team out for like team bonding trips. All of these revenue streams obviously are going to require a lot more hands-on deck and a lot more kind of brain power but I think to really be a successful business you have to go along with the times and you have to think in multiple directions especially in this industry from my experience over the last eight years or so I have done my own business I have worked for companies and I know that it is so important to have multiple income streams trickling in that can support your main business and really your lifestyle at the end of the day okay guys that is it from me today I hope you have enjoyed this video Video, make sure to leave a comment and hit the like button. If you like to connect on a more personal level, make sure to follow me on Instagram, send me a DM, let's have a chat. But if not, then there's a few videos that you can check out now. And if I don't see you on Instagram, then I'll see you in the next video. Bye!